Al Rum, the Byzantines, with the name of Allah, the Most Gracious, the Ever Merciful. Alif Lam Mim, I am Allah, the All Knowing. The Byzantines have been defeated in the land nearby, Syria and Palestine. And they, after their defeat, shall overpower their enemies, the Persians. Within three to nine years, the power belongs to Allah after their defeat as it belonged to him before it. And on that day the believers too will rejoice over the victory given to them by Allah. He gives victory to whom he will, and he is the Almighty, the Ever-Merciful. This is Allah's promise. It is far from Allah to break his promise, yet most of the people do not know this. They know only the apparent side of the present life, and they are completely unmindful of the next. Do they never think over in their own minds that Allah has created the heavens and the earth and all that lies between the two only to suit the requirements of truth and wisdom, and with a definite end in view, but for a stated term, after which the doom must come. Yet many among the people do not believe in the meeting with their Lord ever. Have they not traveled through the land and seen how evil was the end of those who were before them? They, their predecessors, were superior to them in prowess and strength. They tilled the land and populated it more and better than these have populated it. And their messengers of God had come to them with manifest signs, but they denied them and were destroyed. It was indeed far from Allah to have done injustice to them, but they themselves wronged their own souls. Then evil was the end of those who did evil because they cried lies to the messages of Allah, and they treated them as something of least importance. Allah originates creation, then he keeps on repeating and reproducing it, then to him shall you be brought back. And on the day when the promised hour of reckoning will arrive, those who have cut their ties with Allah and were lost in sin will be confronted with despair. None from among their associate gods will intercede for them, though they had renounced their faith in Allah because of these gods whom they associated with him. And day when the hour of reckoning will arrive, on that day they, the virtuous and the sinful, will be sorted out into different groups. Then, as for those who had believed and done deeds of righteousness, they will be welcomed with all honors and entertained in a stately and delightful garden. But as for those who had disbelieved and cried lies to our messages and the meeting of the hereafter, it is they who shall be given over to punishment lasting long. So glorify Allah when you enter the evening and when you enter the morning. For to him belongs all type of perfect and true praise in the heavens and the earth. And glorify him in the afternoon and when you enter upon the hour of noon. Out of the dead he brings forth the living, and out of the living he brings forth the dead. And he gives life to the earth, making it look green and flourishing after its death. That is how you shall be raised to life from the state of death. And it is one of his signs that he created you of dust. And then, lo, you are human beings who are spreading far and wide over the earth. And it is one of his signs that he has created spouses for you from your own species that you might find comfort in them. And he has induced mutual love and tenderness between you. Behold, there are signs in this for a people who would reflect. The creation of the heavens and the earth, and the diversity of your tongues and colors, are also some of his signs. Behold, 
there are sure signs for the learned people in this unity of humankind and oneness of the Creator. And among his signs is your sleeping and your seeking of his bounty by night and day. Behold, there are sure signs in this for a people who would listen. And one of his signs is that he shows you the flash of lightning to create fear of thunder and storm, and hope for fruitful rain, and sends down water from the clouds, and revives therewith the earth after its death. Behold, there are many signs in this for a people who make use of their understanding. And it is one of his signs that the heavens and the earth stand firm by his command. Then, as soon as he calls you forth from the earth by a single call, behold, you will come forth all at once and suddenly. All those who are in the heavens and the earth belong to him. All are obedient to him. It is he who originates the creation, then keeps on repeating and reproducing it. This work of creation and reproduction is most easy for him. His is the most exalted state and the noblest attributes in the heavens and the earth. And he is the Almighty, the All-Wise. He sets forth for you an illustration drawn from your own lives. Do any of those whom your right hands own equally share with you that which we have provided you with? It is, however, a fact that you all, the owner and the owned, are equal partners in it, so that you take care of them as you take care of your own selves. That is how we explain many of our messages to a people who make use of their understanding. Nay, but those who behave unjustly, they pursue their own low desires without any knowledge whatsoever. So who can guide one whom Allah has adjudged as lost? There will be none to help them. So pay your wholehearted attention to the cause of faith as one devoted to pure faith, turning away from all that is false. And follow the faith of Allah to suit the requirements of which he has made the nature of humankind. There can be no change in the nature of creation which Allah has made. That is the right and most perfect faith, yet most people do not know it. Believers, you should all be attentive to him turning to him in repentance, and take him as your shield for protection, and observe prayer, and be not of those who associate partners with him. Of those who have split up their faith, and have divided themselves into sects, so that every party is happy with what they have. When some evil befalls the people they call on their Lord, turning sincerely to him in repentance. But no sooner he lets them enjoy mercy from him than a section of them associate partners with him and starts worshipping gods besides Allah. With the result that they show ingratitude for what we have given them. So, you ungrateful people, enjoy yourselves for a while, but shortly you will come to know the consequences. Have we revealed to them some authoritative proof which speaks highly in favor of what they associate with him? And when we let people enjoy our mercy, they rejoice over it. But no sooner does an evil befall them because of their own evil deeds, then they grow despondent. Do they not see that Allah multiplies the means of livelihood for whomsoever he will and makes them scant? for whomsoever he will? Behold, there are signs in this for a people who would believe. So present to the near of kin his due, and to the needy and the wayfarer. This is best for those who seek the pleasure of Allah. It is they alone who will attain their goal. And that which you lay out as interest and usury, with a view to increase the wealth of the people, does not help increase it in the sight of Allah. But that which you present as the zakat, 
with a view to seek thereby the pleasure of Allah. It is they, then, who will increase their wealth many times over. It is Allah who has created you. Then he provides for you. Then he will call you to death. And then he will bring you to life. Is there any of your so-called associate gods who can do the least of these things? Holy is he, and highly exalted and far above the things they associate with him. Disorder and corruption has prevailed on land and sea, owing to the evil deeds which people have wrought. The result will be that he will make them taste in this world the fruit of some of their misdeeds, so that they may return to the right path, giving up their evil ways. Say, travel all over the earth, and behold how evil the end of your predecessors was. Most of them were those who assigned associates with God. So pay your wholehearted attention to the cause of the right and perfect faith before there comes from Allah the day for which there will be no averting. On that day, they, the believers and disbelievers, shall split up into different groups, so that those who disbelieve will pay for their disbelief, while those who do righteous deeds will find that they have made provisions for their own good, and so that he will reward those who believe and do deeds of righteousness through his bounty and grace and he does not love the disbelievers, of course. And it is one of his signs that he sends the winds as heralds of glad tidings. He does it that he may let you enjoy the blessings of his mercy, and that the ships may sail at his command, and that you may seek his bounty and grace, and so that you may render him thanks. Indeed, we have already sent messengers to their respective people before you, and they came to them with clear proofs. Then we punished those who had denied their apostles and cut their ties with God, and it is of course ever incumbent upon us to help the believers. It is Allah alone who sends forth the winds, and they raise the vapors to form a cloud which he spreads out in the sky as he will, and sets it layer upon layer, and you see the rain falling from its midst. And no sooner does he cause it to fall on whom he will of his servants than they are filled with joy. Though shortly before it was sent down upon them, they were in a state of despondency. Look! Therefore, at the evidences of Allah's mercy, how he breathed life into the earth, making it green and flourishing, after its state of death. Surely he it is, the same God, who will raise the dead to life in the hereafter, for he is the possessor of power over every desired thing. And if we send another kind of blasting wind, and they see it turn yellow for its having taken the form of punishment, they will even after that continue to disbelieve for their being engrossed in evil doings. And you cannot make the dead hear, nor can you make the deaf hear the call when they retreat turning their backs on you, nor can you guide the blind out of their error. You can make only those hear who would believe in our messages and submit to us. It is Allah alone who creates you in a state of weakness. He then replaces your weakness with strength of youth, and again replaces your strength with weakness and gray hair of old age. He creates what he will. He is the all-knowing, the all-powerful. And on the day when the hour shall arrive and the resurrection takes place, the guilty will swear that they stayed in the world for not more than a very brief time. But as they had been turned away from the right way, so they will be turned away from Allah's protection on that day. And those who in their present life have been given true knowledge and the faith will say, you have indeed stayed behind according to the record of Allah till the day of being raised up to the life of the hereafter. This, then, 
is the day of being raised up to life, but you did not care to know. So on that day, no excuses in their defense will avail those who had acted unjustly, nor will they be allowed to approach the threshold. We have indeed described for humankind every excellent thing in this Qur'an, and even if you bring them a sign, those who disbelieve would certainly say, You and your followers are all devotees of falsehood. That is how Allah seals the hearts of those who do not bother to know. Therefore, Prophet, have patience and perseverance. Surely the promise of Allah about your victory and the defeat of the disbelievers is bound to be true. So let not those who are not convinced of the truth hold you in light estimation so as to move you from your stand.